Mr. Price, when you resigned from the grand jury, you re expressed an opinion that its procedures were un-American, that is, the whole grand jury system, not specifically the San Diego County grand jury. In what way? Well, Harold, first I want to make clear that uh, uh, I didn't, uh, uh, and I don't mean to uh, imply any criticism of this grand jury or this, uh, this district attorney. I uh, had never practiced criminal law very much, and... Uh, so I came on to the grand jury with uh, high uh, hopes for doing a job for my community. And uh, I was somewhat startled when I discovered that uh, so many things were happening uh, that are part of the system. The, the secrecy, the pledge of secrecy on the part of, uh, of the grand jurors, which... which uh, uh, restricts them from discussing things that they may think are wrong. The, uh, the, the lack of opportunity on the part of a grand juror who thinks that maybe the district attorney has, uh, has maybe uh, not uh, explained the law fully to the grand jury or instructed them properly, uh, his, his, his lack of opportunity to, to go to another lawyer and ask him uh, whether the law as explained uh, was proper uh, the, the lack of opportunity on the part of a prospective defendant to, uh, to, to know that the proceeding is even going on or to come in and cross-examine the witnesses who are present. All of these things ran contrary to everything I had learned in law school, uh, which I thought was a very important part of the American system of jurisprudence. Why do many prosecutors prefer the grand jury indictment method over uh, the other method of bringing a case into a preliminary hearing in open court? Well, uh, obviously, it's a lot easier for them. Uh, they, uh, they are not subjected to the adversary proceeding. There's, no, uh, there's nobody there to challenge their presentation of the case. There's nobody there to uh, cross-examine their witnesses. There's nobody there to uh, elicit from their witnesses additional information. There's nobody there to argue to the grand jury about uh, whether or not the indictment asked, which is asked for is a proper one or is, uh, is an over-indictment or uh, any of that. It's just a lot easier for them. They get, they get, they can come in with the most serious kind of a case, a uh, a murder case, and they can sometimes uh, get an indictment in uh, fifteen or twenty minutes. A uh, an indictment by a grand jury is a very grave matter. Doesn't the grand jury give very full consideration to this? Aren't they quite careful before they issue an indictment? Well, I can't speak for all grand juries, and I'm sort of inhibited about talking about this grand jury because, but, but. Uh, uh, it's my opinion from having uh, uh, had this experience and from talking to other grand jurors that, that uh, the grand juries don't generally uh, give serious consideration to indictments. They, uh, they, uh, they tend to feel, and, uh, and uh, this is encouraged on the part of the, uh, of the system, that, uh, well, don't worry about it. Uh, the man's going to have his day in court and he's going to have his trial, so uh, uh, you really don't have to concern yourself too much with the, with the damage that might be done to a person because he was indicted. Do you feel that a man might, or a defendant might avoid the, the indictment if he's brought into a preliminary hearing in municipal court where the evidence is presented so that it is definitely determined whether he should be bound over to trial? I'm certain that on many cases, the, the, uh, uh, if the proceedings were brought into the preliminary, uh, through the preliminary hearing method, through municipal court, that the... Uh, that uh, the indictments, uh, the bind-overs wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be made, and many times, if they were made, would be made for a far lesser charge. I think many times you get indictments for, uh, for uh, much more serious crimes than the facts uh, 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 warrant. Do you think the grand jury system has... Yes, I think that the grand jury system really started to protect, as a protection of the, of the individual person against the governmental system and abuses in the governmental system, either by the, uh, the uh, sheriff or the uh, police department or district attorney or judges or uh, uh, tax collectors and, and those. And, uh, and now it's my opinion that the grand jury has become, uh, not through any fault except that the fact that uh, through the years it's just developed this way and the law is bad, has become an arm of the district attorney's office. It's no longer, in my opinion, an independent agency. It's an arm of the, it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy way 
for the district attorney to accomplish uh, the, the purpose that he's supposed to serve. Aside from the grand jury's power to indict for criminal offenses, do you have any complaint over the system of investigating local government agencies for possible corruption or inefficiency? Well, here again, the, you have the whole, the whole uh, area of 19 people appointed for a very short period of time, one year, uh, who not only have to consider all the hundreds of cases, criminal cases that are brought before them, but are charged with the responsibility of so-called investigating all of the things that happen in the community, and it just is physically impossible for them to do anything except get in everybody's way. They really, uh, uh, sir, it really serves no great useful purpose anymore. I, I think it could serve a purpose if it were limited to listening to citizens' complaints. But the, uh, the, the, the time is pretty much taken up by a lot of routine matters. What principal reform would you advocate as far as the indictment procedure is concerned? Well, ultimately, I'd like to see the, uh, the grand jury uh, uh, system change so that there was some type of adversary uh, proceeding in the grand jury and the type of criminal cases that it handles should be limited pretty strictly to those that are required by public necessity, such as uh, where you investigate a, a corruption, say, in a tax assessor's office, and you, the need for secrecy is there. Uh, in the interim, it's my feeling that uh, the grand jury should request of the presiding judge uh, uh, the uh, appointment from the Bar Association every year of an independent counsel who would be present in the grand jury room, who would listen to the testimony and who would act as counsel to the grand jury for the purpose of using his superior technical knowledge uh, to ask the proper questions of witnesses and cross-examine them and uh, advise the grand jury on the law and not rely strictly upon the district attorney who seeks the indictment to advise on the law.